Okay, biblical meaning of transformation. Doon sa San Pablo, ang vision statement ng ministerial fellowship doon is to see San Pablo transformed and blessed by God. But medyo hindi pa clear sa amin kung ano ibig sabihin ng transformation. Eh. Merong isang Korean pastor in one of his messages, ano to, international conference, he, he gave this opening statement. Sabi niya, our message is good news, but our messenger is bad news. Medyo masakit yun, di ba? Medyo masakit na katotohanan yun. Ha? Wala dito. Wala nga sa tabi mo. <laughs> Nasa kanan mo. <laughs> si John Stott made a similar statement. At sabi niya, in our evangelistic efforts, ang problem natin is that we don't look like the one we proclaim. Si Mahatma Gandhi said something to that effect. Sabi niya, I like Christ, but I don't like the Christians. So walang problema kay Christ. Yung Christians ang problema niya. Transformation is God's will for all Christians, and that is both for church leaders and members. Tayo minsan, ang iniisip natin, kailangan mga member natin magbago, pero di natin nakikita tayo rin, kailangan natin magbago. Yan? Yeah? Now, isang key scripture is 2 Corinthians 3.18. Let's turn to that passage. 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 18. If you have not memorized this verse, this is a very good verse to memorize. It's a key verse on transformation. The preceding verses has to do with the experience of uh, Moses. How that every time he would go sa tent of meeting, after communing with God, yung mukha niya may radiance eh. Lumiliwanag. And uh, ginagawa niya, para hindi mapansin ng mga Israelites na nawawala na yung radiance, nilalagyan niya ng cover. Yun ang picture dyan. So verse 18 now says, And we who with unveiled faces, in other words, we don't have to cover our faces, the Lord's glory are being transformed into His likeness with ever-increasing glory which comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. Okay, three things sa passage na to about transformation. The goal, the process, and the agent. One, the goal of transformation is Christ's likeness. Very clear yan dyan. Are being transformed into His Likeness. That's the goal. The goal is not to be another Maxwell, another Rick Warren, or another so-and-so, another celebrity. The goal is to be like Christ. And then yung transformation is a process. It's a gradual process. Dito sa NIV, ang rendering is with ever-increasing glory. In another translation, it says from one degree to of glory to another. So it's a gradual process. It's a slow process. It's gradual. Step by step, from one degree of glory to another. So hindi instant yun. Kaya pag, uh, <clears throat> kaya familiar kayo sa mga statement na tulad ng, uh, be patient with me. God is not yet done with me or finished with me. Lahat tayo is a work in progress. Yun yun. Kasi gradual yun. And then finally, the main agent for transformation is the Holy Spirit. It says there, this comes from the Lord who is the Spirit. In other words, God is in the business of changing lives. And tayo, being in the ministry, that's what we are involved with. We are in the ministry of changing lives lives. God using us as His channels of blessings. Now, there are three that are clear in the scriptures on how this thing happens, you know, on how the Holy Spirit works. Yung isa is the use of God's Word. Tingnan nyo sa 1 Thessalonians. 1 Thessalonians chapter 2 
verse 13. And we all pray God continually because when you receive the word of God, it says there, which you heard from us, you accepted it not as the word of men, but as it actually is the word of God, and then it says, which is at work in you who believe. Kaya nga, very important yun na we preach the word, teach the word. Kasi yung word ng God, yan ang ginagamit ng Holy Spirit to bring about the transformation. So, the word of God. That's one of the ways by which transformation happens. Secondly is the work of others. Ito yung others natin, yung mga disciples, mga mentors natin, mga teachers. Turn with me to Colossians chapter 1. Yung uh, ministry ni Paul and his companions. Colossians 1.28, it says, We proclaim him admonishing and teaching everyone with all wisdom. And then it says, So that we may present everyone perfect or complete in Christ. See, that happens when men like Paul and his companions, they do their job with the goal to bring about Christ-likeness in the lives of believers. Yun ang ginagad. And tayo yun. You find the same statements sa Galatians chapter 4. Galatians 4.19 It says, My dear children, for whom I am again in the pains of childbirth until Christ is formed in you. So, dito ang ginagat na metaphor ni Paul is that of a mother giving birth. It's a painful process. Lalo na tayo, in reality, we experience some ups and downs doon sa mga tinutulungan natin, members natin, even pastors. But that's the pains of childbirth. It's another translation, it says pangs, P-A-N-G-A-S. The pangs of childbirth. And then it says, until Christ is formed in you. So we need others. Others who will help us become more like Christ. For a young Christian, we disciple them. With young leaders, we mentor them. We teach them. And then finally, personal acts of obedience. So dito sa 1 Corinthians 11.1, Again, using the example ni Paul, 1 Corinthians 11.1. 1. Sabi rito, follow my example as I follow the example of Christ. We become more and more like Christ when we set our hearts to follow the example of Christ. It is a, a, an act of the will. We choose to be and we choose to be like Christ. Now, what are some of the signs or indicators na nang, nangyayari yun? We'll not look into all the verses. You could uh, look at that later on. Some of the indicators na alam mo nagbabago na. One, there's a change in beliefs. Kung dati naniniwala sila sa hula, ngayon nawawala na yun. They believe in the Word of God. A change in lifestyle. Kung dati materialistic sila, ngayon napapansin mo, they are becoming more generous. Kung dati ang buhay nila is puro pakabig, ngayon mapapansin mo, palabas naman sila. That's a change in lifestyle. Change in values. Napapansin mo yun because they give higher value to things that are eternal. Change in attitude. Ito, magandang tingnan to. Let's turn to Philippians chapter 2 kasi binanggit ito kanina. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8. A very familiar passage sa atin lahat ito. But let me point out three things sa passage na ito. Philippians chapter 2, verses 5 to 8. Yung uh, first few verses, verses 4, 1 to 4, basically talks about Christian fellowship and the need for unity. And then you go to chapter three, uh, verses 3 and 4. If unity is to be made possible, you'll have to be, you have to exercise humility. And then it says, verse 5, your attitude 
should be the same as that of Christ Jesus. Specifically, yung attitude na yun is the attitude of humility. Sa another translation, you uh, have the mind of Christ in you. Ang takbo ng utak mo, katulad ng kay Kristo. And here in this passage, verses uh, 6 hanggang 8, you find at least three things ng mind ni Christ, kung paano siya nag-iisip. One is, ang mind niya is one of selflessness. It says just a verse, he emptied himself. He emptied himself. That's a key word. Now, sa mundo, mahirap yan. Kasi ang utak ng mundo, pakabig. Fullness, hindi emptiness. Yan ang takbo na yan. Two, ang mind Christ is one of service. You know, he came as a servant, taking the form of a servant. It says there. And then finally, ang mind ni Christ is one of sacrifice. Who gave himself and being obedient to death. So what does it mean to have the mind of Christ? Paano mo nalaman nagbabago na yung attitude niya? Nakikita mo yon. He's more, becoming more and more selfless. Hindi puro pakabig, puro makasarili. Kundi palabas siya. Na nakikita mo yon. To service. He wants to serve rather than be served. Meron siyang mentality na ganun. And then yung element of sacrifice. So change in attitude. And then lastly, a change in worldview. And alam nyo ngayon, isa sa mga uh, popular topics ngayon na uh, maraming nagtuturo, lumalabas. In a sense, it's a warning reminding us now, this is not our world. We are coming to the end times. So lahat ng naririnig natin ngayon, ng mga bad news, ang response dyan is, masakit man, praise the Lord, kasi darating na siya. This is not our world. Alam natin, indeed, this world is passing. And in this world, we are just passing through. Hindi tayo nakatira rito. Yun, makikita mo the way they think. So in conclusion, when we talk about transformation, involves the whole person. Inward and outward. Hindi lang panlabas, kundi panloob din. From the inside out. Transformation is a process that requires both divine and human cooperation. Yung divine don is yung, yung power ng Holy Spirit, yung uh, word ng God, and human cooperation don would be the help of others, and our willful obedience to God. So it's both. And then finally, transformation is the ultimate goal of the Christian life and ministry. We want to live like Christ. We want to love like Christ. And as leaders, we want to lead like Christ. Yan ang goal natin. Okay. You have a page there. Nakalagay, excerpt from the Cape Town Commitment. Kita nyo yan? Okay, pakibasa nyo lang muna. I'll give you the next few minutes just to read that article.